Today was an interesting day for Call of Duty Black Ops 4 on a couple of different fronts. Xbox One and PC got a big update today in terms of content, Blackout got a massive update on PS4, and PC finally got that update that gave them pretty much everything. They were a couple of updates behind. They were previously on update 1.14 before this one, so with everybody now seemingly in line and now with only a little bit of lead-off content on PlayStation 4 and on the Blackout fronts, there's a decent amount of content again for players to jump into. Now, that said, in terms of actually an update, it might not have been exactly what you may have expected in terms of expectations, and we'll jump into that in just a few, but what we had advertised yesterday is a big portion of what's new and what we got. PlayStation 4 users and Xbox One, if I'm not mistaken, didn't actually need an update, so the theorized 1.17 update will be held off for a later day. PC did finally again get that update for 1.16, granting everything to them, and a lot of new stuff was found in the game files, which, for the sake of focus and clarity, we'll talk about later in the week at some point here on the channel. But as always, here's everything that really changed with today's update across the board. Let's start out with the leadoff on the PlayStation 4 front. The biggest thing that I'm going to be playing a ton out of comes in the form of Blackout. Blackout had a couple of things adjusted here with it, but the biggest being Blackout Alcatraz. It is insanely crazy. It's officially called Alcatraz Portal, and what's different from the standard map is, of course, it's a much smaller map. It's a brand new map entirely focused on Alcatraz, but there's a lot of other different things that are changing out as well. Firstly, when you jump into the match, there is no dropship Hilo. Instead, you come in through the afterlife portals, which are pretty cool, but if we're talking continuity for the backing story and lore, it breaks canon big time, but... I digress, that's the nerdy stuff that I don't think anybody else will really care about. Pro tip though, pick your landing spot in the pregame lobby because you drop way too fast and don't have near enough time to adjust course if you try to first discuss it when you come to the portal for the first time. The best tip that I also have in terms of once you actually land, loot up, and all that kind of stuff is work your way from the outskirts or the edges of the map and work your way in with zone. That's probably the best way to do it because then you cut down the potential of having 360 degrees of people coming at you to roughly about 180. It's a heavily populated area for such a small area and it's the best way that I've found. I'm currently sporting an around 80% win percentage there, not trying to brag or anything, but it seemed to be working out for me, so I want to share those tips a little bit with you guys. Other differentiations come down to 40 players and you also have up to five redeploys each redeploy is in intervals of 30 seconds between each and that's pretty fast but the one thing to note also is that it's fast because it's much faster than a regular blackout game about half the time a match of alcatraz portal will roughly take about 10 minutes to complete so it's definitely hectic but always be conscious of your squad and surroundings always try and loot up fast definitely don't take any snipers in my opinion i don't think they're really worthwhile but ultimately i absolutely love this mode i'm gonna be playing and streaming it a ton so hopefully you don't get too tired of the gameplays here on the channel because it is a lot of fun here at this one haven't gotten my hands on anything just yet like the blunder gap that's the new wonder weapon here for this that will be in the mystery box but that'll be in there every so often if you end up clearing out the zombies on the map and getting to there and apparently there's an easter egg as well that will greatly kit out your team but i don't know how to do that just yet we'll keep you updated as all information comes to light other cool features though with it are things like the wall buys which offer a random weapon available through the walls to pick up but there's no ammo outside of the initial mag with that associated with it but ultimately jump into alcatraz portal into the alcatraz map it is a lot of fun and definitely if you've been grinding blackout it's a nice change of pace it's something that definitely feels a lot more call of duty arcade shooter than say blackout even if that's something that i think they did really well with regular blackout i think this actually is that pace that players probably hope for out of a call of duty game and so with a little twist on the standard br genre and of course close quarters it doesn't turn out to be all that bad i quite enjoy it so jump in check it out for yourselves if you're on playstation 4 soon to come on xbox one and pc as well the other big thing comes down to Blackout now being free to play for an entire month, or I guess asterisk on an entire month because we missed out on yesterday. But from now until April 30th, we'll end up having the ability to jump in if you don't have Black Ops 4 to Blackout in particular for absolutely no charge. And that means, if I'm not mistaken, also, if you're somebody that doesn't have the game, you can end up playing this brand new Alcatraz game mode for free. No charge, you can just jump in, and so hopefully, not only will this hopefully introduce more people into what Blackout has to offer, and potentially maybe even be a foreshadow of what's to come in terms of the marketing strategy for Blackout, but it also should immediately help out a lot of players in terms of watering out those lobbies with maybe not so great of players. So if you're looking for new kill records or anything like that, decent time to go for it now if you're trying to break some personal records but it is free to play and i think if i'm not mistaken again it should be right in the highlighted areas of the stores on xbox playstation or battle.net so check those out and of course if you don't have it 
gain access to it for an entire month. There apparently as well was another after action report within Blackout. I haven't necessarily noticed all that much about it, but that was something that was changed out as well. In terms of MP, there really wasn't all that much again added in here, but we saw a playlist change with this. We ended up seeing Bare Bones, Hardcore Bare Bones, Mercenary Deathmatch, Stockpile, and one of the chamber being the featured game modes for this week on PlayStation 4, and I believe also across the board. Now that we have Bare Bones in both Xbox One and PC, that's something that I think these are actually all across the board as well. In terms of shop updates, we ended up seeing the Cherry Blossom come back as a bundle, not necessarily just a regular purchase now. You also end up getting two more reticles out of that bundle if you end up getting it, in which we've actually seen both of those are purchased individually before, so you're technically getting for the same price of the Cherry Blossom a little bit more. Not that I care all that much about the reticles, but those that are interested, and then we ended up seeing an emote added into the store as well. We haven't seen that special order refresh out just yet. We still have two more up on deck that we know of, that being Misty and also the Magnum PI Tom Selleck lookalike skin for Crash coming at some point. League play rounding out the changes here ended up having twice weekly events now with bonus pools for those daily and weekly bonuses for playing, and of course chaining together all sorts of things with that. So that was the lead off content in terms of what else was new outside of that on Xbox One and PC. Again, Bare Bones starting on the MP side here at this. Bare Bones is available for all. Hardcore and Core Bare Bones is available for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC finally. Then on top of that, we ended up seeing that Ancient Evil finally launched as well on Xbox One and PC along with that. So the new Zombies Map DLC 2 for Black Ops Pass holders are available right now. Also coming along with a bunch of other elixirs, all sorts of different talismans and a new perk as well. So all that stuff is added and we covered that here on the channel as of last week. Just want to breeze by that a little bit and let you guys know, hey, it's live right now. Contraband stashes in Blackout now have the Homewrecker melee weapon in the standard map for Xbox One and PC. And then PC actually ended up getting their weapon tuning. We mentioned that they were a couple of updates behind. They were previously on 1.14. So now you end up having all sorts of different adjustments here for the Cordite, the Daemon, the MX-9, the SOG 9mm, the Switchblade, the KN, the ABR, the Paladin, the SDM, the RK-7, the Mozu, and the Strife. Those all, of course, we detailed last week here on the channel in terms of those updates, but some very minor updates to each one of those weapons. So while today's update itself wasn't necessarily across the board anything super game-breaking or game-changing in that sense, there were some things that we still haven't seen that I want to talk about and what is upcoming that we know of. So jumping into it, well... Firstly, we didn't see the mini stream for Black Ops 4's MP. We didn't see the Vendetta or Mini 14 sniper rifle introduced in any capacity, though that's still apparently in the same game build that we have. We just haven't seen it introduced. So when is that coming? We have no idea. And the big, I guess, number four theory that we've talked about, because we've gone through many iterations of when we think it'll come, was today because it was the 28 day mark, and that's when we saw the Barbarians event added in. So maybe we end up seeing a much shorter contraband stream because they got to give us more time in terms of days than the number of tiers left, but we'll have to see how that one turns out. There was no new Dead of the Night gauntlet, no new characters added in, nothing like that. So those things that we were kind of hoping didn't necessarily get introduced in the capacity that we thought as of today. But what is interesting, though, is that Treyarch gave us a little bit more of a brief rundown of what we can expect for the next upcoming month. And I'm talking real brief. It wasn't anything too revealing or anything like that. They ended up mentioning that Infected is coming as of next Tuesday on the 9th. So that's something to look forward to and probably going to be across the board on all platforms. I'm hoping... Hopefully there's no exclusivity on that one. They also mentioned that after that, Arsenal Sandstorm will be introduced into the game, probably around that two-week mark left on the event itself, to tide over players until the next operation drop and when we end up seeing new DLC, maps and weaponry and all that kind of stuff introduced into the game. And talking DLC weaponry with a Black Ops Pass, curiously enough, they ended up mentioning that there are going to be three new Black Ops Pass maps coming at the end of the month with Operation 4. April 30th is the day to look out for that because that's when the new operation kicks in but if i were to guess well firstly three is kind of weird because we've seen this cycle of two per each operation if i were to guess though i'd probably say the third one may be a remake or a reimagination a remaster however you want to put it because other than that, I don't necessarily see them breaking convention like that, because that takes away from the other drops that we've previously known about. First Strike was two maps, Absolute Zero was two maps, Grand Heist was two maps, and so it was set up perfectly to end up having six operations, two maps each, 12 ultimate maps at the end of the year. But now we're going to see some differentiation here in that, and it seems like we're going to have one operation with only one now at this point. So definitely curious to see why that's the case, but... 
that's some stuff to look out for as well that was detailed as the blog post and patch notes earlier today. But said, that is everything that changed today, everything that we know of so far, and some things that are still yet to be answered. So, want to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. I'll drop the link to the full patch notes down there as well for you guys in the description. So, feel free to check those out and see if there was anything on a more minor scale that we didn't necessarily talk about, but was covered in last week's title update that Xbox One and PC are now kind of playing catch up with, or more so PC in that regard. But, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Are you excited for Blackout and the Alcatraz update here? Have you played it? Have you checked it out yourselves? What are your thoughts on it and are you liking bare bones if you're on xbox one and pc and so on and so forth of course like we mentioned we got a lot of stuff still to cover here throughout the week so stick it here on the channel if you guys are new but hopefully you enjoyed the video if you enjoyed make sure you drop a like down below and of course if you're new to the channel make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things black ops 4 mp blackout zombies we got you covered the best of updates news information tips tricks all that good stuff so if any of that issue hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing if you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, there's the best place to get connected outside of YouTube. Craig Blue on both those. So if you guys want to check up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. Well, that's it now. Thank you guys all so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.